to talk to you about an RTV build. It's right here, right? It's looking at me. The idea behind this video is we're going to take the parts off of the chassis of the Stampede 4x4 and put them on the chassis of a 4x4 Stampede VXL. Yeah, let's, let's get right to it. So we're going to start with the flashlights. Um, there's a couple of screws on each side. This one, uh, the one screw, well, mine's been broken a few times, so it just comes right off, but... Uh, the uh, screws on the side, not that one, it's this one. One of them goes into a small piece that attaches to this one. And that is an M2.5 screw. That is, uh, let's see, I'll tell you exactly how long it is. 12 millimeters. So, that piece will come out. Well, it will, there we go. So that's the piece that attaches on here. I've, uh, apparently, according to Ben Edie, this is a pretty common problem with these things. They do break. I made it so it came apart in two pieces um, because the, uh, well, you wouldn't be able to do it any other way. Anyway, this one, I just put some foam in the back temporarily. Uh, this lens, or this um, uh, reflector, is out of a $2 um, flashlight off of eBay. And what I did is uh, took some cutters to the edge of the flashlight, opened it up, There we go, and Bob's your uncle, everything's out. And then I took the reflector and I cut it down at the spot where it would be the same width. So we've got a nice deep reflector in there and it, uh, it fits in. You can see this one's too big, but once you cut it down to the right depth, it'll be fine. Um, the front lens is actually just out of some packaging. So let me pull everything out of here. Did I get it all? Huh. Oh, there it is. It's attached still. So we've got the uh, little black uh, spacer to make it look like the original. And then there's the lens that's on it. All right. So there's the flashlight. And there it was gone. All right. That one I'm going to move over here. Back end. I'm actually not going to take off the back end. And I'm probably not going to take this flashlight off either because the whole front assembly will come off and we'll be able to put it on the other one easily. I will take this apart to show you the inside. And this flashlight um, is a nine LED flashlight again. Uh, the lens from it fits in here quite nicely. Solder the center pins, solder the outside pins. And I think I have one that's done. There we go. So the positive is in the center and the negative is on the outside and it does run on five volts quite nicely. It's very bright, but it does, uh, does seem to work. So why on earth would I have made a little L shaped thing on here? Well, when you're pushing this in, it compresses a little bit. And if you don't do that, it can't compress and you'll end up breaking it. There's one reason. The other one, if you really want to have a latch on it, you could drill a little hole in there, put a set screw, and then when, uh, when you're pushing it in, it could, technically, if I can, oh, that's why the lens is in the way. You could push it in and turn it over to latch it on. Uh, it really doesn't come off at all, so I wouldn't worry about it. Hole in the side lines up on the side here so that uh, you can bring the wiring inside the uh, RTV. All right, 
flashlight. The handle. The handle is a piece of three quarter inch aluminum with a very long oblong hole on it. The hole is, I'll get this set. The hole is 19 millimeters. by seven millimeters. And it is from the front of the metal part, not the cap, but the, from the front of where the metal begins, I think we're, what are we at? Five millimeters back. So again, 19 millimeters, or thereabouts. What was this one again? What did we say? He said seven millimeters and five millimeters back. All right, handle handled. Now this thing, it's a pressure fit. So it's gonna be a little tight. One of the things that uh, I noticed when you're putting this piece in underneath, you can give it a little rub with either sandpaper, or, you know, in my case, I, I have a nice little set of small files. You just give it a little rub and uh, it'll smooth it out a little bit. You don't want to do it too much because otherwise this thing will just jiggle around in there. So you really want to make sure that uh, it's tight, but not so tight that you can't put it in. So when we pull that back, what does it reveal? The screw. The screw that fastens it in. I used a Phillips because the head on it was very small. Because the head has to be less than the width of this hole. And there you go, it's off. Um, yeah, you know what? I don't think there's much more to explain on that. I'll move on to the back cover here. These are all M3 screws. They should be short. I didn't have short ones, so I cut these off and I left these longer. The holes, the holes here look large and that's because they're supposed to fit magnets. Now, my magnets never arrived. Um, that was an eBay order, well, I don't know, I'm gonna say a month and a half ago. Uh, I've got 4.7 millimeters. I'm guessing they're probably going to be five millimeters by four millimeters in that range or they're uh, four. You know what? I'll, I'll post it. The back plate has got the antenna. There's a couple versions of the antenna. Um, one version's got the wire wound on it and there's a spot uh, there's a spot where the wire actually goes right into, I think you can see it there. It goes right into the plastic. It's a bit tough to jam it in there, this uh, two millimeter wire. Um, you may have to drill it out or uh, sharpen your wire on the other end. And then if you're wondering what this other piece was, this is what you wrap your wire around for the antenna to get the right width. All right, uh, it's held in with an M3 screw. And then we've got the um, high rose top hat here. Uh, you know what, um, you can either print one or get one off of GB fans. There's a few places you can get them. Um, flat toggle switch, flat paddle toggle switch there. Um, eBay, easy to get. Um, Lots of sanding on this to get it to look right. I'm gonna tell you that. So if we're gonna take off the doors, we're gonna to need to take these two screws out. I know in the film that's, um, these were actually solid all the way through. And my guess is the two holes that there are here, I put grub screws in them, but those two holes we're probably, I mean, they look like they're lined right up with what would be a front shaft. So I'm guessing what they did 
is they uh, put a front shaft in, they use the screw to screw it into the door, and then they just put a shaft, like a three millimeter shaft is what I used. That's too big. Uh, let's say this guy. So I use a three millimeter screw to hold the door in place. I want to pull it up. So this is a wheel collar. It is uh, the diameter. Come on, Phil. Diameter is eight millimeters, and it's got a three millimeter shaft uh, hole in the middle. And the width, four millimeters. So it's eight by four with a three millimeter shaft hole. That's what I used. On the front, you'll see what it looks like. And I'll show you what these push rods look like later. So we got one door that's almost off. It's loose at the back, we'll get the other one done. Pull these out. Uh, try and make it so that you can see. Maybe I'll show you this one. As you pull these out, you can see the shaft. There's a three millimeter shaft up there that gets exposed. Now I'll pull this front one off instead. And if we're going to pull that front off, um, we pull these two screws out first. Gone. All right, so you may be asking why are the holes so big in the front? Well, if you want to use a different front plate with a different knob locations, the screws won't interfere with it. That's one reason. The other reason is you want to be able to see your servos as you're assembling it to make sure that you're getting things right. Makes it a lot easier when you can see what you're doing. One screw to, and it's an M3 screw again, and this one M38. So M38 holding the front assembly. So it's, uh, there we go. And then the doors will come off once that's off. So what about this guy? So it's got two three millimeter holes because the shafts on the uh, doors are three millimeters. These are M2.5 and they're approximately five millimeters in length. And uh, these M2.5 screws are the same as they were on this side. They're, I'm gonna say 12 millimeters or so, maybe 14. Um, grub screws, there's a grub screw in there and a grub screw in here. They're both, I use M3 and this is um, an M4 screw. I just put an M4 screw in there. I'm guessing they had something in there because it sure looked like uh, there was a bottom to it. It didn't look like it was just a hole. So I put a screw in it and uh, actually looks pretty good. All right, so front's off. Um, on the doors to hold the shaft in place, there are holes on both sides. You can put in, you can flatten the shaft and put in grub screws if you want. Um, I put the grub screws on the outside only just for looks. Really, they, the shaft doesn't move and it's not a big deal. Let's get these off here. Now, I'll give you a little detail. These are M3 holes on both sides. And uh, how long is the screw again? Well, that's a great question. It's a flush head screw, and it's uh, 10 millimeters, look at that. So when you're preparing your um, wheel collar, the wheel collars come and both sides look flat like this. So take a drill bit that's approximately seven millimeters, something like that, and give it so you can uh, get the tapered screw in. It 
makes it look just a tiny bit better. The shaft is M3, so it's an M3 shaft, but it's also an M3 grub screw hole in these. Uh, there we go. So what I've done with these is I've taken a 1.7 millimeter push rod with, uh, it's oddly enough, the M2 uh, clevis fits on the end, so great. Um, and I've cut it, filed it so that the end fits inside a brass grub screw. And then I solder it in. There. So this guy just fits on the end. So you're going to need some pretty uh, short, I say brass grub screws. If you get steel ones, um, you're going to have a harder time soldering. Brass is a much lower temperature to solder to. The solder sticks and it'll actually uh, be pretty sturdy. It, it, act, it is pretty sturdy, I must say. Uh, so you can see here in the front, you can see where the, uh, let's see, I'll get you there. You can see where the clevis pin goes onto the uh, servo arm. I'll get that length when we take it apart and I'll give you the length of this as well when we take it apart. The back, I didn't see that these were attached to anything on the back part of the door, but I made sort of fake hole looking things there so that it would look like there's a hole like there is in the front. So these are real and these are fake in the back. But we still put the stuff on the door, put them on the back. Uh, the tape. I used um, <laughs> electrical tape. You know what? It was fine. Uh, it's not perfect, and I don't think it's supposed to be perfect. Next. On the post here, there is another M3 uh, screw that holds in the latch. Now, on the real one, um, I've seen a couple of different things. Sometimes the screw goes all the way through and there's a nut on the other side. Sometimes it's just recessed and it looks like this. So I pulled this guy right out, uh, and this is a 12 millimeter M3 screw. What holds the top on as well? There's two more screws up front, and there's two screws at the back. So let's get these two back ones off. So they're M3 tens. All right, and the front ones. And, uh, oh, sorry, you know, I haven't been telling you, but I think I put this in the instructions. These are cap head screws, you can see that. And these are pan head screws in the front, and they're black, and the reason they're black is so that they hide under the doors. This is not something you see on the original. This is just something that I had to put into the design to uh, sturdy it up a little bit. Now, this guy. There we go. So now we've popped the top off. Yay, one more thing done. And uh, I'm gonna take this guy off. It's got, oh yeah, maybe I should take the uh, receiver out. Motor controller, ESC. It'll just be a little bit easier. As I've said in the previous videos, there's uh, nothing done on the inside yet. So, one more screw down here. When I'm putting all these screws in, I actually use taps to do it. I know some people say, oh, you don't need to tap plastic. You know what? It's uh, You'll end up with a weak thread. And I say, well... You know what? I uh, bore out the holes so the screws move freely where they need to, 
and I tap the other ones. And I've got um, I've got a few different taps on hand. My M4 tap. I've got a little more Skookum uh, rig for that. My M3 tap. I always keep uh, handy, and my M2.5 tap as well. So. I keep them all handy and I use them a lot.